Okay, I'm Lee from the Oshkosh Beer Blog. I'm Am from the Van Carlson Wines. And this week we're uh, drinking Yokel from New Glarus. Um, this beer is part of their seasonal uh, series. Uh, it came out just uh, the beginning of June uh, this year. Um, and we just started getting into Oshkosh like the first week of June it actually started coming in. It's at uh, Festival Foods, it's at Pick and Saves. I've seen it at some gas stations around town. Yeah, but, yeah, absolutely. But uh, let's... Uh, Let's get into it, huh? Okay. You can go first. So this is a, a what's known as a Keller beer. It's a German-style lager that uh, kind of is a specialty of the Franconia region of Bavaria. Um, essentially what it is is an unfiltered lager, uh, unpasteurized typically. And traditionally, these beers were, they would go right from the fermentation vessel into, into wooden kegs. Um, and they'd have low carbonation, uh, like you had mentioned earlier. We were talking; they're sort of like the the German version of an English cask beer. Um, of course, when you bottle a beer, you're gonna have a different sort of product. And, yeah. I mean, for an unfiltered lager, this looks pretty damn clear. <laughs> pretty clear, yeah. There's a little bit of haze yeah. to it, but it's not. Uh, and then it's certainly uh, like a gentle carbonation, not uh, not crazy. But I had this when it first when it first came to Oshkosh, and uh, the first few bottles I had. Were significantly hazier. Yeah, and you said it was it was uh, known as Zwickel beer then. Yeah, it's a Zwickel beer. Zwickel uh, originally, so it's called Yokel now by New Glarus. They had originally named this beer Zwickel beer. And Zwickel is a, it's a tap that sits on the edge of a on the end of a fermentation vessel, so you can pull beer right off the fermentation. Vessel. Okay, and now correct me if I'm wrong, but a Keller beer translates to cellar cellar, cellar beer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, to me, this smells quite a bit different. So, this would be the equivalent of a sort of a German Helles or maybe a German export beer, but it smells significantly different than a yeah. standard type of lager. Well, and I noticed right off the bat, it's got a beautiful kind of cereal malt aroma. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, is there a Munich malt in this, do you think? Or? I don't know. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty light. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a touch of that in yeah, there. Yeah, but you think it's mostly pilsner. Malt? I would guess it's probably mostly pilsner. Okay, and I get like a fruit. Like, I get almost like a pear um, aroma. Coming sure, out sure, out. yeah, absolutely. That's good. That is just. Yeah. It's got kind of a, a creaminess in the mouthfeel. I was going to say there's definitely a creamy sort of texture there. Yeah. It's, it's a medium-bodied beer. Um, the carbonation is a, kind of punchy on it. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little spritzy, uh, but overall I'd say very refreshing. Yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely a, an easy drinking beer, uh, but a little bit more substantial than you know a regular kind of light, lighter style lager. I think it's got, yeah. just because that mouthfeel is more medium and kind of round. These were you know these are the standard beers of uh, beer garden beers. These are the these and Hefebites are the big beers. In okay, the, sure, I can beers, see that. German beer gardens. <clears throat> um, so, I get a little, in the finish, I'm getting a little bit of hop flavor. I don't, it's uh, it's like, a, obviously, a noble hop of some sort, like yeah, an Allertau. I think it even or, says on here that it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't say what, what sort of hops are using. It says noble hops. Okay. I, it, I get it almost like a mintiness. It's, it's subtle. I mean, all the flavors in this beer are, are subtle, but, it's kind of yeah, like herbal yeah. sort of hobbiness. No, I, I get that definitely. And, and just a little bit of spice on the finish, but it's really, really very clean, low hop. I mean, we're talking IBUs. We're saying, you know, under 15 probably. I would say right around there. Yeah. yeah. 15 to 20, right around there. Yeah. So you have this on draft here. Yep, I have it on, right on draft. And I think it tastes strikingly similar on, Does on it? draft. Not, I mean, it's not any cloudier, maybe a, a touch less carbonation on, on draft, uh, but... Very very nice beer on tap as well. Okay. So, in in June they started coming out with all New Glarus did with uh, their seasonal beers this year and uh, yep. another one they have out is Berliner Weiss. The Berliner Weiss beer, which is a, uh, a tart uh, German style wheat ale. And this is actually brewed with uh, Riesling grape musk, which I believe was sourced from Wisconsin somewhere. I know Devin and Dan carry like the source local ingredients wherever they can. And do you, what's the alcohol on that? Do you know? That's a, I, it's got to be around. I, I, I don't, I'm not certain it's released, uh, but I would say it's probably right around three and a half percent. So, yeah. and a th- great, 
great summer ale. I mean, exactly. Totally drinkable. This one here, I think, is at four seven. Four so seven. Again, okay. Really, you know, it's a beer to drink in quantity. I say. Yeah, <laughs> I agree completely. But it, what what I kind of like about it is, like, there's, you know, you get some big beers and. It's just such a rush of flavor. Yeah. With this, you kind of have to spend a little bit more time thinking about it, if you want to. Yeah. I mean, it's a beer that you can just drink, to and enjoy. Yeah. But uh, it's it's a beer that kind of reveals itself slowly to you. you yeah, know, well, I think and I think you, you'd argue, certainly, that uh, a lot of lagers are, are like that more subtle kind yeah. of layers of flavor. It's not, it's not really, you know, you don't get the big American hops that blast you in the face or the big, you know, roasted malt note or anything like that. It's, it's a very kind of, um, you know... Thinking man's beer a little bit, but I, I really enjoy it. I mean, yeah. I uh, this I bought three six packs of it so far. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's really it's fantastic for for the style, and, and certainly you know you gotta applaud New Glarus with what they're doing. You know, bringing back kind of lesser known beer styles left yeah. and right between a Berliner Weiss and a Keller beer, two beer styles that maybe five years ago not many had heard of. Right. So, well, and you think about New Glarus now; they're doing. Last year they had one hundred and sixty-two thousand barrels they brewed. That That's, makes them the 25th largest brewery in America, the 20th largest craft brewery in America, and only distributing to Wisconsin, and only distributing here. Well, yeah. I think we can, I think we can toast our fair state yeah. in that one. Uh, a lot of good, good uh, local beer drinkers here. Yeah, the only craft brewery bigger than New Glarus is Minhas, if if you care to consider them a craft brewery, <laughs> which is kind of a stretch. Yeah, well, and they do, I think, a fair amount of. Contract brewery as well, of it, yeah. Of it. yeah, yeah. So that I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, count them in, but it's a great beer. Yeah, I, really I, like I agree. Uh, I just want to touch on one more thing about I have some special releases that New Glarus has uh, undertaken as well. I know last last weekend um, they released a, 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 a vintage Goose, which is a uh, a blend of one, two, and three year old uh, sour lambic beer. That's a very very special sour ale and that was uh, a release done just at the brewery I think it limited to um, maybe about a thousand bottles total but yeah that's... it was I, I saw what it was and it was ridiculously low I mean the number of yeah bottles yeah so that's that's really a cool thing I know uh, Dan Carey really likes to strike on those unusual styles and um, I think he's all about kind of wild fermentation as yeah. well they have that whole that their former Fruit cave former or... brewery I believe is where they brew all their sour beers at which is very unique, and apparently, uh, per the brewery, there's going to be more to come. So, yeah. they, I believe they, they released the uh, Enigma Sour Ale before um, the Berliner Weiss beer, but they're going to keep a rotation of sour beers, which are great thirst quenching beers, especially for summertime as well. Yeah, great. Right. Okay, uh, a couple more things I want to mention before we close out here. So, uh, this week, tickets for Brews and Blues will go on sale. So, Brews and Blues is, the, is a beer festival at, at the Leech here in Oshkosh. Uh, tickets are $35 in advance, and they'll be available at Fratello's uh, Festival, uh, Oblio's, and Omaro's. Um, so you can start looking for those. I uh, want to send a shout out to Dublin's. They, they've been really getting into the, the food and beer pairing thing. Uh, and weekly now, they're doing a, a special beer and, and food pairing where, where they're having a dish uh, coming out of the kitchen and pairing it with a beer that they have on tap. And this week, they have uh, cherry glazed barbecue ribs with three sheep's hoedown. Have you seen that Three Sheeps Hold On? Yeah, I I read about. It. I believe it's it's like an imperial. So they they make like a base imperial black wheat ale that they manipulate in several ways. If I remember correctly, this one was brewed with uh, tart cherries and cocoa nibs, and, and attenuated to like maybe like ten ten percent alcohol. It's a ten percent beer. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. The cherries, uh, chipotle peppers, okay, uh, and ancho peppers. Okay, there so we go. Yeah, that sounds kind of like an interesting pairing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and one last thing, uh, next week. Adam and I won't be here, uh, but we will be back here on July 2nd, the week after. So until then, prost. Hey, cheers.